welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, Fasil Stanville Esquire. She'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Vasil Stinville Esquire. She is our guest here tonight. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I'm it's excited. great to have you here. You know, we love having different people. We bring different entrepreneurs, different professionals, and it's nice to have an attorney in the house. Every yes. now, and, now and again, we like to bring in some legal counsel. Yes. So tonight's episode is definitely going to be very informative, especially if you want to deal with health care issues, a little matrimonial law. This is going to be your episode. So let's kind of dive straight into it. Tell us about who you are. And before you became an attorney and started practicing law, who is Fasil Stenbell? <laughs> Well, I'm a Haitian American. I was born in Haiti. Um, it was wonderful. I mean, I left I left Haiti at a very young age. Came to the United States, raised in New York, um, but I pretty much started off in uh, healthcare. So, as most parents, oh, as I'm sorry, most Haitian um, mm -hmm. American parents, they tend to push their children into healthcare because healthcare is the safe route, and mine did as well. And I went into healthcare administration. Now, it was not my passion, but it worked well. It worked well to show me what, I, what I'm what i good at and what I'm mm -hmm. good at is advocating. And so um, after I did my degree in healthcare administration, I decided to um, pursue a legal career because I felt that it more aligned with who I am. I'm a fighter. <laughs> yeah. And so I went to law school and um, here I am. <laughs> that is amazing. And it's so funny because I have so many Haitian friends and we all laugh about it. They're like, they always want you to either be a nurse like it's just certain key paths um i have another good friend of mine who's haitian and she's in the media field and i could relate because i think once you have caribbean parenters media anything artsy is not looked at as a real job exactly and it's not safe i mean at the mo at the end of the day they they know for instance healthcare is more of a um it was there so nursing or physician is the ideal of but course. I have no interest in touching blood or sick people. <laughs> no offense to sick people, but... No, of um. course, you know, and you have to, you do it, you did it, you satisfied them, they were happy, but it's not yeah. it's not what you want to do. Yes. So after pursuing a law degree, um, what made you kind of focus in on matrimonial and, of course, I guess the health care kind of came easy for you. Yes, it did. So as far as the matrimonial, my, my practice focused on health care and matrimonial, as you said. Um, I after, after law school, I had a great opportunity. I worked in commercial litigation. It's, most, it's ideal for most um, attorneys out of school. I mean, the hours are long, the work is brutal, but the pay is good. Hmm. But at the same time, too, if you don't love what you do, I'd always advise to leave it because you need to find what, you do, what you're good at and what you actually enjoy doing. And so while I was at the firm, the commercial litigation firm, um, I had an opportunity to work on one of the um, client's divorce. It was just thrown at me. I was one of the only females at the firm. So, of course, there was a divorce case and I was a likely candidate for it. But I found that while I was doing it, I actually enjoyed it. And partly because I was dealing with someone someone in their issues. I felt like my work was being validated. I was helping a family. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately, I decided, you know, let's go that route. Something where I feel good coming home or um, years down the line and I see that this person took my advice and it benefited them. So, um, so when I opened my own practice, I decided, you know what, let's do that. Let's do family law, let's do health care, um, let's do the matrimonial. And at the same time, I still have all this knowledge with health care. Why not continue on that route and mm -hmm. um, advocate for physicians or nurses who ha who's having issues in their contracts and do also with the health care aspect. So that's how those two became the um, focus for my practice. So it's interesting. So you can actually represent um, 
physicians in medical malpractice, or are you on the other end when people want to take uh, physicians to, to court? Well, my practice is more limited towards the business side of a physician, for instance, or a nurse. Um, business side in their profession. I mean, clarify that. So, for in respect to the business, I help them. Most practice practitioners they start a business, and as most people, they're great at actually doing the work. But the business side is completely foreign to them, which is understandable. You didn't go to school to be, you know, to for most part, you didn't get an MBA or or an accounting degree. So a lot of times they get into the problems because there's a lot of healthcare laws they're not aware of. There's contracts that they're entering that's just could be fraudulent mm -hmm. or it could not be in their best interest. So I help them in that respect. And also people have licensing issues. So I've had several clients come to me and who are nurses and man they are being taken so much advantage of really especially in that field because I think there's a fear to speak out and say this is not fair because I need to shop I need to pay you know the bills I need to protect my family and so after seeing that and having my mother also in the nursing field I you know it was only right for me to represent and be a voice for those people as well so that's where the healthcare aspect of my firm really works well and what are some of those common issues? Because we have a lot of people who represent and, and work actually in the healthcare right here in Brooklyn and in New York. So what are some of those common things that they should look out for and possibly might be able to use your services? Okay, so in um, I'll break it down into the two most um, professions that I, I tend to represent the most. As far as physician, a lot of them are starting their own practices, but they don't realize that their entering contracts is just illegal. For instance, um, recently a client came to me and um, their contract included patient lists. They were purchasing an old practice. You can't sell patient lists. And mm. now this person is putting their license in danger um, simply because they thought they're just purchasing a practice and it's a simple thing. You gotta speak to an attorney. You have to speak to an attorney. As far as nurses, there's a lot of nurses right now that are, again, like I said, are being taken advantage of where they're just not getting paid. They're being forced to um, work hours and they're not getting paid overtime, or they're being forced to do things that they're not supposed to do in a, in, a, um, in a hospital. And no matter how big the hospital is, because I've actually gone against several big hospitals, half the time you can win. You just have to be vocal. And I know in the stand is fearful, but you have to speak up because more than likely you're not the only one. Mm -hmm. And so um, those are the two things uh, I've seen, at least in those fields. Absolutely. And that's great. And we'll go into a little more detail later. But yeah. definitely we want people to know that, you know, if you are being taken advantage of, that's important. Yes. Um, we have so many people who work in healthcare, care. Um, and this is a great point. And I, someone like me who's on the outside who may not be aware, I'm like, wow, this is that this is actually happening and happening a lot. Um, is something we definitely want people to to be aware of. Um, so how long has it been now that you've actually had your own practice? Okay. So o over four years now, I've um, opened up and went on my own. And it's great. It's amazing how many um, things you can accomplish once you decide to really go out there and do it. And, um, and one of the things I love about my firm is it gives me ability to do things the way I think is right and putting the people first. And I know it's typical, a lot of attorneys say, you know, our um, firm is based on, or centered around the client and we put people first, but a lot of times it's not the case. And with us, every case is different. Every case is different, every person is different, every family is different. Right. And so we try to see not just what the law says, but what can work for you. And well, how can we make it? We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. And don't forget, on November 4th, you're going to want to check out HANA, which is the Haitian American Nurses Association. So I prefer what we're talking about. They're having their annual gala. And if you want to get tickets, the phone number is 646-667-5326. That's 646-667-5326. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us.
you're watching Beyond Focus TV, I'm Lydia Patel here with Priscilla Stinville. So as you were saying, you know, great segment in the first part, really informative. Um, so you say in the last four years, you decided to actually branch out on your own. Yes. Kind of give us a brief overview of how it is. I know it's a lot of just challenges still, because when you think about it, owning your own practice or running your own practice is essentially running your own business. So yes, you have a lot of freedom in the sense that it's yours, but when you have people, now you're kind of responsible for people who work underneath you. Oh yes, <laughs> kind of share some of that with us. Okay, so I'll I'll sh I'll start from what led me to um, start my own practice. I remember sitting down in um, in a firm I was working at the time and receiving all these um, newsletters that are pretty prominent in in the field, legal field, um, and they show you know these firms that are prominent, these firms are well to do, and all these firms had one thing in common. Very rarely you saw a woman, and rarely did you see a black woman as being um, the head of the firm, a partner, mm -hmm. or having some sort of distinction enough to be placed on a cover or even um, shown uh, in these magazines. And then I was looking it up, and I was, and for some reason, even though this, in this field, as in most fields, black women are very relevant, and we are a great percentage, but we're not represented. And a lot of times we don't go for um, starting our own or maintaining a real firm. A lot of time it's more or less um, gap fillers on a resume, hang your shingle until you get a job. And so, um, and I decided, you know, I don't want that for me. I really want to have a leading firm. And one of the things you have to do, location is, look, you know, it's everything. And um, Financial District off Wall Street was the best place for me to start because it was just give you the opportunity to just socialize, to interact and build business. But like you said, it's completely different. Going from employee to being an employer mm -hmm. is a lot. And similar to the doctors, I have we have the same issues as far as you know what you you know your practice, but the business side you have to learn. Absolutely. And so I def that was my challenge to learn that part. Well, let's talk about Wall Street because for you to penetrate <laughs> that and survive four years, I mean, Wall Street is not easy. There's still a lot of it's still like an old boys club. Yes. Old, old white boys club. Yes. To a big degree. Um, so for you to be a black woman running your own practice, that's that's kudos to you. But it's still very very hard. And I'm sure you get. You still get the looks, you know, it's yes. not so much of a big surprise. People have seen this in New York, but it's still hard to penetrate through that wall. Yes. And one thing I would give advice to anyone who wants to um, start their own business or start in business where, like you said, it's, it, it basically is an old, you know, boys club and it's hard to penetrate. Be persistent. I, I mean, you have to actually take on um, the identity that you want to you know, personify. And with me, I started using them as models. So I started going to meetings at seven o'clock in the morning. Yes, I tell you, bright and early. <laughs> One thing I've learned about Manhattan, business get done at seven o'clock in the morning before the day starts. And I um, did my research, found out what organizations to join, and I joined. And now I have the respect of, believe it or not, a lot of those old boys club members. And mm -hmm. they're calling me and giving me clients and referring me because not just that they referred one client, but the client, you know, had Came raving reviews, and so now they feel more comfortable. And I'm, um, I'm, I think I'm in. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but it's great that you get to actually be a part of that and get that respect because it's hard. Yes. Um, and you know, one being a, a woman in any type of professional scene is still very difficult um, because you be where you, you might get the looks you know you're yes. still trying to look professional but you look cute and there you're going to be looked at regardless um and sometimes you know this to look at us as eye candy or whatever which is fine as long as but guess what you get the job done yes and that's the thing use your i learned to um not hide from your looks but use them to your advantage you know what's in your head you know what's in your brain and one thing i realized is especially as a woman we have all tools and use them and you don't put yourself in a position that's compromising but don't shy away as well you know for instance if you're a woman who wears dresses don't feel you have to change it to a pantsuit or anything of that nature just know when you speak let what you say be of substance where it can't be denied because you look pretty or you look beautiful or um, you're you are a woman just on that basis alone 
but you commend eventually. that respect exactly but i've learned to um use our this our differences as advantages as opposed to allowing what society puts us as a um, you know disadvantage and internalizing it at. absolutely what has been some of the highlights um for you in the last few years oh i was nominated